What's going on, Goon? How you doing? Sorry about that. I was just sending some uh, sending some tweets and whatnot out. We should be getting the uh, thing to start connecting the chat here pretty soon. So I'm going to be doing a live reaction, hopefully at least, to the new what is up with the title of the game. The game's actually dying now. So I'll get into this in a second, but Nerd Immersion, or not Nerd Immersion, Jesus Christ. Uh, Nerd Slayer does a, what's going on, Andre? Um, Nerd Slayer does a, uh, a series of videos called Death of a Game, right? And I'll actually just go ahead and um, do this here. So Nerd Slayer Studios over on YouTube has the death of a game stuff going on here. And if you go look at the videos, they do like the Friday 13th game, Pokemon trading card, Dragon's Dogma, Black Prophecy, Sims Online, Day Before. I mean, it's all death of a game stuff, right? So on the community tab, one of the last things that they put up two weeks ago, Nerd Slayer put up here was greetings detectives we have another shooter to cover this time a cs like that features a third person shooter gameplay ultimate third person tactical action shooter become an agent of rogue company and wield powerful weapons high-tech gadgets and game changing abilities accept the mission and jump into a variety of 4v4 and 6v6 game modes rogue company was a top stream shooter and even had the likes of dr disrespect featured in with the game alongside a soundtrack with run the jewels irs has seemingly abandoned rogue company as of late especially after a major company restructure where it seemed to be put on maintenance mode uh this channel is a collaborative effort as detectives work better in groups whether that means players or developers please tell me about your experience playing rogue company if you did what you did didn't like about the game and most importantly the largest contributing factors you think contributed to the game eventual failure feel free to leave a comment here if you have any thoughts or points to address but if you want to send me a longer message concerning your experiences or thoughts you can email me and this is nerd immersions or nerd immersion jesus christ nerd slayer nerd immersion video popped up earlier whenever i was setting everything up so i guess i have that in the back of my mind so the video dropped today it dropped an hour ago so i am going to do a live reaction to the video it's only 16 minutes long so i'm just gonna pop in here i'm gonna start playing the video here in just a couple of minutes um we're going to pause it if need be talk about a couple of things fact check it a little bit if we have to you know this is going to be a very quick stream a very down and dirty stream uh, i didn't really even have in mind to do this but whenever i saw that the video dropped i started watching like the first what up kyle i started watching like the first like two or three minutes of the video itself and i was like well I'm going to react to this anyway in real time. I might as well do it as a live stream video. That way, if anybody wants to go back and watch my reaction to it or whatever, they absolutely can. So, yeah, that's what we're doing here. We're we're doing death of a game, and of course, I I I I wish that everybody that is watching this go watch the actual video because I don't want to pull pull uh, pull uh, views away from. Um, Nerd Slayer, fantastic YouTube channel, fantastic work over there. Uh, so, you know, so this is, I'm doing a live reaction to Nerd Slayer Studios' Death of a Game series about Rogue Company is basically what this is. Uh, this is going to be a quick stream. Whenever the video's done, I'm probably going to end the stream. Uh, the video that he put up was 16 minutes long. So, you know, we're just going to watch it. I'm going to pause it if need be, do a little fact check action, and then talk about whatever it may be there and just kind of roll with it that way. So let us get started. I'm going to cut this off completely. Moved on back to Overwatch. Well, that's cool, man. Hope you're enjoying the Overwatch experience as of late. So I don't know how the audio is going to be 
I'm just going to have to actively monitor it. So if it's quiet on your end, just let me know in the chat and then I'll adjust the audio as need be. So without any further ado, let's get to it. Hi-Riz is a company known for taking popular trends and making an attempt of their own, often leading to quite successful endeavors. Well, initially. And then the dreaded Hi-Riz abandonment sets in as things slow down and suddenly things come to a quiet end. This is mm. the story of many Hi-Riz titles, but none more high profile in the world of shooters than the third person shooter Rogue Company which was designed by famed Halo Pro Scott Gandhi and featured a soundtrack from the famed rap group Run the Jewels. Rogue Company was to many players a third-person Counter-Strike, which was novel enough to gather an initial audience including some famed content creators like Dr. Disrespect. But then suddenly the updates started to evaporate in classic high-res fashion and a company restructure seemed to put Rogue Company on the shelf. While the game is still technically alive, it hasn't received much of any attention, as it exists in a maintenance mode sort of state, finding its way onto this series, Death of a Game, where we diagnose the largest contributing factors for the death of a game or company, using a timeline to uncover various clues and bits of evidence culminating together finally for a final deduction. I love and hate hi res like many of its OG fans, so I feel like just the person to cover any of their titles, especially when I am so used to their approach, or pattern I should say at this point. Without further ado, let's get to the case. Why did hi res abandon yet another seemingly successful game? Bald head talent, yeah, you already know, Veli. You already know, man. Is the audio good? Is the browser audio good for everybody? Uh, I just want to make sure that everybody can hear everything, you know. Uh, thing is, they put more into Paladins than Rogue. Well, we're, we're going we're gonna to dive into it here. Look at this. OG Canals? Is this OG Canals right out of the gate? I don't know. Maybe. The story begins back in 2019 with the announcement of Rogue Company. Paladins and Realm Royale would launch the year before, being the biggest examples of what many fans would call the high res chasing a trend. So Rogue Company following the year after would make it feel very much like the title was in a similar boat. And before people say, well that's quite unfair as the video starts with, if you haven't seen other high res videos I recommend, Global Agenda, Realm Royale, but high res has been chasing trends since their third person MOBA smite accidentally kept working. Realm Royale and Paladins <laughs> were able to steal some success from the popular titles in their genres. Paladins able to have more long-lasting success. And hi -Rez was looking to do the same with what was looking to be a cross-play, cross-platform, third-person shooter dubbed Rogue Company. Rogue Company would feature a lead designer from the Halo competitive royalty, Scott Wait, Gandhi. Look at this dude. Look at little Scott Gandhi right here. Team Carbon. What year was this? I'm going to say this is what, 2000 MLG Pro Circuit? This is probably what, 2000, uh, 2006, 2007, something like that? Come here. Come here, boy. So theoretically, the game was in good hands. Rogue Company would dip into a seemingly unpatched money exploit within Epic Games and become an Epic exclusive the same year. That's because, as many know, later on, Rogue Company would also launch on Steam. Now we've not only seen titles do this before, we've seen them also fail epically, like titles like The Cycle and Spellbreak which we've covered on the series. The move is one for financial reasons purely, taking a bag before launching for real on another, more popular platform in Steam. Rogue Company would charge for closed beta access on Epic Games Store July 2020, a classic high-res move done in nearly all of their games. It reduces the amount of refunds that you can get, since players are likely to play at least a few hours at launch to see how things are going to go eventually, and the problem is that it makes your game feel very dated before it ever fully launches. Mm. Now, I won't completely poo-poo paid closed betas just because at least they involve those in the beta that are actually motivated to test it, but it's just if the game doesn't launch with enough content, then many people who have been playing it for probably years before at that point are going to feel like it's not good enough. It's a classic problem that happens with these early access slash closed beta paid access games. It's at this time that Rogue Company's identity is seen for the first time. It wasn't just a third person shooter, it was taking inspiration from the famed competitive shooter Counter-Strike, which was an interesting idea, right? 
a third person counter strike rogue company was also wait we got to go back for a second look at this old school store that we've got going on here third person counter look at this green baby who misses the green store with just what the six perks no weapon swap this is og rogue company right here this is wild Look at this, replenished 10,000. Dallas had replenished 10 grand right here. I mean, come on. Counter Strike. Rogue Company was also splitting audiences and attempting to also be a hero shooter, like Overwatch or even Paladins in a sense. I say splitting audiences because Counter Strike players generally aren't hero shooter players. Overwatch kind of learned this the hard way. They play their game because it allows them to use guns and military stuff, while Valorant is the fantasy version that actually allows heroes as well. Valorant was already around, so it had that part covered. But Rogue Company was trying to do in many ways what Valorant was doing, just in third person. So it was almost less influenced by CS and more influenced by the more current trend. Valorant, though, was built from the ground up with a powerful developer backing them to be a competitive shooter and a developer in Riot that already knew how to do it with League of Legends. Trying to compete with them was going to not just be difficult, it was going to feel almost impossible. Even if being third person was your whole gimmick. It's oddly reminiscent of Battleborn leaning into their Overwatch iceberg. Open beta would take place October 1st, 2020, and Screen Rant, who had played the game the previous months before it went free in open beta, had the following to say about the game in their preview write-up. It's a strange mixture. The heroes have a cartoonish look that clashes with the realistic arsenal they have at their disposal. The original key art for the game fits more with this gameplay, but the hero designs are one of the few things that the developers at First Watch Games have nailed from the get-go. While there could have been more work in game to really get these personalities over, the designs are varied enough to effortlessly form a cohesive world right up until one of them picks up a standard assault rifle. Screen Rant's issues seem to be about the world's continuity issues, and how unlike the game's competitors, it was just lacking there. The Destructoid, who played the game before open beta, was calling the game devoid of personality or just generic, despite not particularly having a bad gameplay experience. IGN, who would rate the game a 7 out of 10 based on the open beta on Epic Games Store, would have the following conclusion to make about their time in the game. Rogue Company is an entertaining, if derivative, shake-up to the established hero-shooter genre, mixing elements from various other games to prop up the handful of unique ideas it can call its own. Beneath these seemingly basic third-person shooter mechanics are intricate strategies, interesting characters with nuanced abilities, and plenty of maps to keep things varied. I mean, dude, that is, that is absolutely correct, right? This dude's statement right here, let's go back. Beneath the seemingly basic third-person shooter mechanics are intricate strategies, interesting characters with nuanced abilities, and plenty of maps to keep things varied. That is absolutely correct. The game came out with a ton of maps. The characters were all interesting and unique. Everything was just like, the reviews aren't bad. The reviews are not bad at all. We're doing... Our live reaction to death of a game rogue company tally. That's what's happening. Strategies, interesting characters with nuanced abilities, and plenty of maps to keep things varied. It could use some work on the technical side, but as free-to-play team shooters with crossplay on every platform, there's a fun foundation here that already feels worth my time. So there while the go. biggest complaints were concerning the game's genericness and technical issues, the game was still able to garner an impressive 2 million players. It even attracted streamer Dr. Disrespect, who would even get his own skin. To add some of my personal thoughts about the game, I actually think that the game is pretty fun, all things considered, especially considering it's very, as IGN put, derivative. My issues are, and, and nobody else mentioned this in their review that I could see, is that the third person animations are honestly really bad. They're really clunky and clearly have delays to them. As yeah. somebody who's been playing third person shooters for a long time, this is pretty noticeable for me. Now that aside, the game was being relatively positively perceived. The concern, and the concern always is with high res, is could they keep that momentum going post-launch? Rogue Company would fulfill their console crossplay dreams in November 2020 with the Xbox launch. Now, I personally think that a third-person shooter does well on console, or at least it can, so it wasn't a bad idea. Season 2 would hit May 12th, 2021, and it was Rogue Company's biggest update yet. It would introduce a new rogue, new maps, new events, and even a new battle pass. In my opinion, this was their best foot forward. It just took them seven months to create it because they clearly launched a unfinished game. A seven month content schedule is a snail place in this modern age, and that likely slowed a lot of their momentum, despite how good the update was. 
Rogue Company would come to Steam just about eight months after the game was playable on Epic Game Store, which makes the whole exclusive thing just kind of seem silly, and seem like Mr. Tim Sweeney just got finessed by dozens of companies doing the same thing. The problem with this is that it doesn't create platform loyalty. And while that might sound funny to many of you, Steam dorks can be touchy about it, and people notice the whole epic exclusive trick and then also get turned off, as you can tell from this very popular thread on Reddit. Yeah. The population would hit an almost 12k peak, and then 6500 average, which was pretty impressive, especially since it doesn't count the cross-platform populations. Rogue Company would then score 74% on Steam, which wasn't so bad and certainly salvageable. It seemed like players were willing to give the game a shot, on account of it being free and all too. In a bizarro world move, hi -res would do what they do, but this time with one of their pre-existing games and add a battle royale mode that they were arguing that people wanted. I don't remember that personally, but that's kind of the MO. It's one thing to move slowly on updates for a live service competitive shooter style game, which is already a sin. It's another to start adding modes that basically change the identity of what the gameplay is. At this point, the population had dropped from their impressive initial peak to just 1500 players. So I find it really hard to argue that any of those players were asking for this, right? Many of the testimonies that I were getting from players who were jilted about the game were concerning moves like this and the speed of the content being released. What was more worrying was apparently that Scott Gandhi was getting moved to lead developer on the mobile version of the game, with Pretty Hair being moved to lead designer. According to my sources, Pretty Hair would change the game from a competitive style approach to a more casual mm, top belly, there you are. some level of RNG now. These changes wouldn't be wanted nor particularly liked, according to the community though. A few new seasons would be introduced throughout 2022, introducing some new maps, a King of the Hill ranked mode, further splitting the player base by the way, which was already in trouble. However, notice this bit of trivia at the bottom of Season 8, where it states that it's the second season without a new map, and you can see that the content was starting to slow down even further. Now it becomes even more difficult to resurrect a dying competitive multiplayer game when you have such a small player base and you are already behind content-wise, especially with hi -Rez's track record of abandoning all of their less successful games, which felt almost inevitable at this point. Season 10 was the desperation season. They were promising adding a wingman mode, which would bring back players knowing that they could actually find matches now, actually. Even if they are just 2v2 men. Uh, uh, <laughs> that's funny, Valley. I'm sorry, but that's hilarious. But it's awesome that you made it into the video, though, man. This is going to get a ton of views. Season 10 was the desperation season. They were promising adding a wingman mode, which would bring back players knowing that they could actually find matches now, actually. Even if they were just 2v2 matches, which I enjoy, I should add. You can see the population pop up a bit because of this, over 2k again peak. However, the average amount was only at 1400 players on Steam. And this is quite the fall from their initial gracious numbers and being featured on the front page of Twitch. Success was drying up, and it was noticeable on the Nintendo Switch especially, with hi -Rez killing support altogether of Rogue Company. Now, I didn't even know that they had a launch there, to be honest, and I don't know if it's even the best target audience, to be blunt, so I can't use this as a big example of the game failing as a whole or not doing super well, but it is kind of just another thing to add to the rap sheet. In a shocking turn of events, hi -Rez would restructure their company into like four different companies in June of 2023. Hi-Rez itself would be rebranding as hi -Rez Ventures, which makes sense considering they were a private equity company anyway. And then Titan Forge Games would be in charge of Smite and Smite 2, which they hadn't announced at the time. And then Evil Mojo Games would be heading up Paladins, Rome Real, and Rogue Company. Then Rally Here would be in charge of the in-house software company, helping all of the companies. And then finally, added later on, Prophecy Games was a new subsidiary of hi -Rez, with the CEO himself in charge of it handling the new Tribes game. Now, if this seems quite confusing, and many of you are wondering why, besides the reasons they feed us, well, let's just be honest, it's because they know that their hi -Rez name reputation sucks. And I'm glad, because, well, they deserve that. If your reputation sucks so much that you're changing your name into five different companies, there's probably a good reason for that. That being said, they had to have learned from Wildcard of Arc Infamy, who has like seven different companies who've made like a bunch of different games. 
that if you just create a bunch of subsidiaries and companies and rename them a bunch of times and move the devs around, people just forget about the hate of the parent company or the OG company, period. Now, chatting shit aside, Erez Gorin, the previous CEO who ruined quite a few of the projects we have mentioned before, is still leading the company. My read on the restructuring is that Evil Mojo is the maintenance company operating on a shoestring budget, which means that Paladins, Realm Real, and unfortunately the topic of this video, Rogue Company, won't be getting any more significant updates. Updates they needed before they rushed their launch. With peak numbers back to where they were before, and average numbers in the 800s, things just weren't looking good for Rogue Company. If you check their Steam Spy, you can actually see that they only ever reached about 20,000 players on Steam. Which wow. Which is only 9k players higher than their peak player count. Which kind of proves my point about how this money glitch of Epic Games Store exclusives seems to have some serious negative ramifications. Rogue Company would be doing so poorly, the much-teased mobile game, the one that they moved their lead designer for, Rogue Company Elite would be cancelled the same month that the restructuring was announced. Now, this was a significant blow, because although some might wonder why does a mobile game spin-off dying matter, it's because COD Mobile rakes in the cash, and Rogue Company is quite aware of that. Or, they were at least. Them cancelling the title meant that they didn't see the market there anymore, and there was just too fierce of competition. Now, what should also be mentioned is that Scott Gandhi was no longer working at hi -Rez, and now is working as a design director on Hunt Showdown. Pretty Hair would leave the company and go work on Fortnite. So, either of these developers clearly had some level of skill to go get hired pretty much immediately by other companies right after. But things just didn't work out for them at hi -Rez, which, for me, kind of shows you that there must be some issues at hi -Rez, right? Hmm... With the music playing, that means that we've reached the end of this mystery. While Rogue Company is still hobbling around, it hasn't gotten a serious update in almost a year. And with the current population numbers in the absolute gutter, I don't see it making a comeback anytime soon. So what went wrong with Rogue Company? Well, if you weren't paying attention, the high res effect was in full effect. It was released unfinished and it just never caught up. They never cultivated a community. They were platform switchers. It had a poor market and design focus. What even was the focus? A total lack of identity. In the end, are we totally surprised? No, not all cases will be surprising, especially with some repeat offenders. However, there is something particularly interesting about Rogue Company as an attempt by hi -Rez. It feels even cheaper than the previous Realm Royale attempt, and even Paladins, which actually managed to keep an audience around and be pretty successful. Maybe it's all the time spent on marketing over making a good game, or asking for proper feedback, the big soundtracks using Run the Jewels despite not even being a completed project yet. Rogue Company just feels like, and felt like, hi -Rez hasn't learned a damn thing. And that's worrying if you're a fan of Smite with the second game on the horizon. But who knows, maybe they are stacking all of their talent on that title next as their possible golden goose because it's certainly not them betting on Tribes 3 for the future with how things are going there. And I'm sure that hi -Rez, with all their different names now, will continue to do what they do best. Come up with good game ideas that are fun and have no idea how to manage and keep them going. Thanks for watching. I mean, dude's not wrong, right? I mean, when you look at the list of like what went wrong for the game overall, right here. Bam. Oh, wrong screen. The high res effect. Released unfinished. Never cultivated a community. Poor market and design focus. Lack of identity. I mean, he hit the nail on the head here. It is absolutely insane. Here's one thing that I will say, though. It's crazy that, uh, at least in my estimation, that there was no touching on the RCCS and the amount of money that was poured into that. And I know, I know why, right? Because there's no way to get concrete numbers, right? There's no way to get concrete and a concrete amount of money that was dumped into the fact that they took an unfinished, poorly marketed 
you know, poorly designed focus, lack of identity, third person tactical shooter thing that was trying to be, you know, this thing that was going to break ground. They dumped all this money into it. There's no way to dig that up. Right. I tried to get Rome like, just to be completely transparent on the situation. I tried to get Rome on the broadcast so that I could discuss exactly what's going on with everything. Whenever all that drama and stuff was happening, he wanted to have nothing to do with that. Right. He wanted to have nothing. He said that I would need to reach out to the, um, what was it? High res or rogue company team. It was the high res esports team, right? Which he was a part of, right? Because he signed a contract and it's on his resume, which is public. He publicly puts his resume online and you can go track it down. Um, that he worked for high res denied working for high res denied being contracted through high res, any of that stuff. And told me that if I wanted to speak to anybody about the current state of rogue company competitive, that I needed to speak with someone over at high res. So there's no way that nerd slayer, because the, that since it's not a public company, since high res isn't a public company, you can't see where this move, this money's moving around to. And I understand why it wasn't touched on in this, but that is a massive, massive, huge part of it, right? Nerd Slayer didn't touch on any of the crossover stuff, which I mean, hey, you got Rambo, which appeals to anybody that's like, I'm going to say 30 years old or older, you know, for the most part. You have the Walking Dead stuff, which didn't even refer to like the television stuff, which happened about 10 years too late, in my opinion. Um, so it makes sense why that wasn't covered, but at the end of the day, I mean, dude's not wrong, right? Dude's not wrong at all. Uh, should have used that mobile elite funds to help create content for rogue itself, uh, rogue instead of wasting it on projects that no one asked for. Well, the thing is, well, and I agree with that, but the money was spent. That was a tax write off. That was a test, right? They were testing the technology, you know? It's tax write-off is all that was. So it's okay for you to dump hundreds of thousands, if not millions of dollars into something, as long as it's research, as long as it's, you know, testing things, it's, it's a tax write-off. That's exactly what it was. So from a business standpoint, they're going to be fine because they dumped how much money into that? I don't know, but and it's tax write-off at the end of the day. Uh, game is dead and they killed it themselves. They kept switching on, di switching to different things like focus on one game. Yeah, exactly. I agree, Tally. I agree. Thing is, they removed tactical from the official wording of the game. So there's that. Yeah, I know. And, and which is absolutely ridiculous. Like that hard pivot whenever Pretty Hair was involved, uh, when he was the lead designer or whatever, into the, um, into the more like RNG arena style shooter. That, that was the probably the biggest mistake that they made, in my opinion. What's going on, Stank? How you doing, man? Hope everything's going well. Yeah, this was a very interesting video, and dude's not wrong. So I, I thought it was well put together, well presented. I think uh, maybe could have spent a little bit more time. I know that there's only so much information that you can actually like pull out of like what's publicly available. But at the end of the day, it was a well-made video. All we need is Epic Games to save it, but we already moved on. Epic doesn't want it. Why, why does Epic, let's be honest here, Finesse. Why does Epic, why would they want Rogue Company? It was created in the Epic Engine, so therefore it can be made. They already have uh, Fortnite, which is a third-person shooter, that does everything that Rogue Company does, and some would argue that it does it better. All you have to do is just like take the battle royale idea of having one life, apply it to smaller, uh, well-designed maps, and then you have Rogue Company. So I don't think Epic wants it. Why would they? What would they do with it? They would buy it. They would consume the assets of it. So like all the weapon assets, all the character models, and all that stuff, and just shut the game down. It's sad. Even though I came into it late, I can. Uh, see its potential. What's going on, Monsoon? Yeah, I was just doing a little watch party thing here on the death of a game because I enjoy watching uh, Nerd Slayer stuff. Um, fantastic channel. If you guys haven't watched anything on there, please go check some of the videos out and go watch that video for real. 
on your own time. That way you can kind of pull it apart your uh, yourselves. Um, but I mean, Rogue Company is something that, you know, I built my channel on for the most part. A lot of people that I'm friends with, a lot of peers, a lot of people I respect built their channels on Rogue Company. And the fact that it's made its way to death of a game, like the Friday the 13th game, death of a game, let's see was released the death of the game was released one month ago right here when did that game drop right friday the 13th the game the way state so it released in 2017 here and it took them until february of 2024 to make a video on this game dying right rogue company didn't even make it that long like legit. So. Try Overwatch. Yeah, I've I've played Overwatch recently. Um, I played it whenever they uh made the change to the projectile sizes and projectile speeds and all that stuff, I went in there and tried it out because that was one of my biggest problems with Overwatch overall was like I don't mind playing with and against a lot of projectile based champions, but it felt weird and off. The new projectiles to me feel better, except for the hit scan characters, which is kind of weird. But that's a whole different, that's a whole nother topic, though. Um, but yeah, I've played it recently. So, um, as an Overwatch one casual, Overwatch two felt like a huge slap in the face. I mean, yeah. And I think that dude did a death of a game for, um, for Overwatch some point yeah right here death of a game overwatch 2 hold on death of a game overwatch 2 eight months ago so the, hey that one's worth checking out i've watched that one it's pretty interesting here's halo an hour and six minutes long right, some of them get long you know what i'm saying but when rogue stopped getting mythics overwatch dropped five or six since then i mean that makes sense you know uh, they promised so much for the game to be a giant deal. Yeah, I know. But I mean, I do, I do understand it to a degree, right? Because you're going to release it on the next generation consoles. They wanted to pivot into a free to play game. How do you do that? If, if the OG overwatch was a paid game and it didn't have cross play, I don't think. Right. Uh, and if it did, it wasn't fully cross play. Um, I mean, it may, to me, it makes sense. They just overpromised. Like you said, they promised so much. They could have just said, "We're we're we're dropping the the free to or the paid aspect of it. We're releasing Overwatch free to play. We're just going to call it Overwatch. It's going to be available on all consoles, and we're going to work on some cool stuff in the background. Here's some stuff that we may or may not get. Right? So, you know. But anyway, I just wanted to uh, do a live reaction to uh nerd slayer studios death of a game on rogue company i mean this was something that i've been waiting to come out since dude dropped the uh thing over on the community section on the channel so at the end of the day rogue is still gonna be accessible from what i understand for the foreseeable future um and i'm gonna play it of course i mean i can't just stop playing it all together but Am I going to slow down and stop? Sure. Why not? I mean, you know, I wouldn't say Overwatch 2 is dead, especially since their comp scene was revitalized and is doing well on Twitch. No, the idea of the video finesse is the fact that people said it was the death of Overwatch because they started leaving the game in droves and the comp scene died because of the promises that weren't fulfilled. So, you know, like it's, yeah. I can definitely enjoy this as a series. Oh, I mean, this is, like I said, this is a live reaction. I wouldn't mind reacting to, a, to stuff from time to time. You know what I'm saying? But, you know, just wanted to get on here and give my two cents. Been playing since 2017 and I'm fine with it. What we have 2016, what Overwatch? I mean, yeah, it's, you know, everybody has their own opinions about it. I mean, I don't really care for, what Overwatch and Blizzard does with that property one way or the other. I mean, 
it's fun to get on there every now and then and, and mess around and have a good time with it and play some different characters that do some interesting things. But like, I don't, the thing with overwatch is like, it didn't capture me the same way that rogue captured me and the same way that rogue captured a huge majority of the player base, the people that we all know and we enjoy playing with and we're, we're friends with because it was something that was legitimately dude said it was like, okay, we're a mix mash hodgepodge of all this other stuff. Sure. That's absolutely correct. But it was still something that was not done before. There's not a third person tactical shooter. There's not a third person crossplay tactical shooter. They just didn't. The developers didn't know do what they needed to do. You know, a lot of toxic players hit rogue. I played a lot yesterday and even had games and every game had at least one being disrespectful. Yeah. I mean, that that's where we're getting. And I think that it's not just the toxicity of the players, but it's the frustration with the player base. The matchmaking sucks. A lot of the game modes need to be reworked, revitalized. Um, easy anti-cheat does what it can do with what it can do. Consoles doesn't have easy anti-cheat, so it's up to the consoles, you know, to deal with how cheaters are there. It's just, I think people are frustrated, you know? Hackers and cheaters. I don't run into that many hackers and cheaters. I run into a lot more people with Smurf accounts, you know? At its core, I don't think it's a bad game. Just lack of care and content. Exactly, Valley. It's not a bad game. It's fun. Dude, I remember whenever it first dropped and I was like, this is it. Like a third person crossplay, tactical, fun, interesting experience. This is what I've been waiting for since like Gears 2, Gears 3. You know what I'm saying? Something that I can play with my friends, that I can play with anybody that I want to play with and have fun with it. And it's it's competitive and it's interesting. And I can take it as casual or as serious as I want to. It covered so many bases for me, you know, like there was a huge time in my life where I didn't play a lot of video games and like, you know, I had an Xbox, so I did a lot of gears Two, a lot of gears three, a lot of gears three, like an unnecessarily amount of gears three and then COD all the way up until like what black ops three, maybe even before that, maybe it was one of the infinity war ward games and then i just kind of got out of it life came along i didn't have time to play i got you know an xbox um one played the reworked or the re-release of the original gears game on there played a little gears 4 that was it just didn't play anything seriously for a very long time and then paladins caught my attention and kind of pulled me back into the fold and then rogue company hooked me like I hadn't been hooked in a very long time and it sucks. It feels bad to know that we don't know what the future holds for it. And that's the, that's the reality of it. Everything else that they promised, they just let the ball down. Yeah. Advanced warfare. I didn't even play that one. Stank. Like I was out before that one even came out. They overpromised, but we did get a lot of what they promised. They just didn't deliver PVE the way they the way they wanted to. Don't blame devs. Blame Bobby, who had his greedy hands and everything of Overwatch. I mean, the facts are, if they really wanted to deliver a PVE experience, they could. It's Blizzard, for God's sake. There's nothing. There's literally nothing holding them back other than the apocalypse. So if they realistically wanted to do it. They absolutely could, you know. Um, I watched the uh, Nerd Slayers uh, Death of a Game for Rogue Company. Over on the Nerd Slayer Studios, uh, at Nerd Slayer Studios, it's the newest video. It's been up for uh, one hour, and it's got almost 5K views. So be sure to go check that out. So... played destiny a ton in early seasons of Fortnite. i played Fortnite whenever it dropped on switch for the first time that was the first time i i checked it out so what's up pancake all right i'm going to go ahead and wrap this up folks uh i just wanted to do like a live you know live viewing live impressions with everybody and just kind of you know talk it out get it out there all that good stuff but yeah rogue company death of a game at nerd slayer studios and i'm actually going to pull this up 
It's just a, there's a video series called death of a game where, um, they talk about why games fail and rogue company is the newest one. So I'm going to drop the link in there. If anybody wants to watch it, that it's just coming into the chat. Hopefully that pastes. Yeah, there it is. So, um, but yeah, you can rewatch the live stream. I'm about to end it, or you can just pop over and watch the nerd slayer video. Uh, but yeah, I hope everybody has a great one. Uh, it is Friday night. So enjoy your Friday night. Hope everybody has a good one. Uh, I'm going to get out of here. I got to get ready for work for tomorrow. Um, you know how that goes. Got to make sure I got the sandwich. Got to make sure I got the coffee good. I got to make sure that I got the, you know, the gas in the car. You know what I'm saying? Uh, but y'all take care out there. Uh, stay safe out there, Griff. Sorry I missed Helldivers yesterday. No worries, man. It lives on on the channel. So feel free to dive into that. Have a good night. Thanks for stopping by, Wags. Have a great one. Take it easy, Valley. I am going to go by, back and watch your Dragon's Dogma videos. I started watching the first stream earlier, and then um, I got sidetracked with something. I I don't know. Marina needed something or something. I don't know what it was. But, yeah, everybody have a great one. I'll catch you guys on Sunday with some more Baldur's Gate. Y'all take care out there. Later, guys. I'm not going to let this play all the way through. I'm just going to like let it play for a second so that way it don't cut me off because sometimes it cuts me off, you know what I'm saying? Have a good one, guys.